tonight on uh, this mission. As you heard earlier, uh, uh, Brisat uh, was built by SSL for uh, PTL Bank. Uh, PT Bank Racket, uh, one of the largest state-owned banks in Indonesia. And if you remember your geography, Indonesia is a massive country. I mentioned earlier that about 17,000 islands. Well, this bank has 10,600 optional or operational branches across those islands, nearly 237,000 electrical channel outlets, or I think we call them ATMs in the uh, United States probably. In all, 53 million Indonesian citizens use that bank, and uh, obviously the only technology that could ever, uh, ever make it possible to uh, pull them all together uh, is satellite. You know, it's amazing uh, to consider how big modern satellites are. You might recall the first man-made satellite placed in orbit was Sputnik. That was on October 4th of 1957. And it was uh, 58 centimeters, 24 inches in diameter, a ball. It weighed uh, 83 kilograms, 184 pounds. All it could do really is send out a beep tone. But it represented an amazing leap in technology, and that little beep was the spark that ignited the space race and focused the attention on the satellite communications. Many of the people you're seeing right now probably, uh, uh, you know, got their start or their dream in the satellite industry because of those early days of the space race. Well, compared to Sputnik tonight, Echostar 18 was a giant. It weighed. It stood 8.3 meters tall. That's over 25 feet when deployed the solar panels to, and have the exact measurement, but over 30 uh, meters. And uh, an incredible 13 kilowatts of power uh, for that satellite. 61 high-powered transponders. Brisat, we call it the smaller of two satellites, but again, uh, it stood... Uh, or stands 5.6 meters high. You know, we talked about uh, Sputnik. Sputnik ran out of power, went silent 21 days after it was launched. It re-entered the atmosphere and burnt up on January 4th, 1958. So, anyway, there you see it. The SILDA sliding away now. And it has been separated, and for the first time, Brisat is uh, exposed to uh, space, and very soon we'll see sunshine for the first time. And uh, we're now over, uh, what, 2,500 kilometers above Earth, and uh, we're just under 8 kilometers uh, per second, 8 times the speed of a bullet, basically and some 13 plus thousand kilometers uh, in uh, space. Uh, So we are now out basically over the Indian Ocean between Africa and Australia. Yet another act of uh, the space race uh, now begins, or the space ballet rather. Uh, The onboard computers are calculating the exact changes necessary for dropping off Brisat. And obviously, we uh, don't want to collide with either Echo Star 18 for Dish Network or the Silda that uh, we just dropped off. And uh, again, you don't want to bump into something in space. That makes for a bad day. Uh, more rocket science and orbital physics coming into play uh, right now, high over uh, the Indian Ocean. Uh, The space ballet continues as we prepare for that separation of Brisat. Uh, Again, that's going to happen about uh, 42 minutes uh, into the flight, uh, some uh, uh, um, uh, 4,300 kilometers above uh, the Indian Ocean at a speed of about 7 kilometers per second. Uh, Not only do we have to orient the uh, satellite composite, in a safe and correct direction. We have to take one more step. Uh, Each one 
of the customers have specific requirements for the insertion of their satellites into geostationary transfer orbit, GTO. Both uh, Brisat and Echostar 18 asked Ariane Space to spin up their satellites, so to speak, before separation. That process uh, will begin uh, shortly for Brisat. It will have what is known in the business as a transversal spin rate of 1.5 degrees per second. There comes the pocket protector and the rocket science again here, right? But uh, that will be the spin rate when the computers in the vehicle equipment bay um, say that uh, it's okay and they release the satellite to begin its life in space. Uh, you know, and the information that you see down at the bottom of the screen here and all of this data, uh, it's flowing back here uh, to Jupiter to something called the CVI. And a number of people are following and analyzing the key flight data. They report to Ariane Five's flight status, or they give the flight status, to the team that's back here at Jupiter. All those guys that are down in the so-called fishbowl uh, in front of us here. The CBI is headed uh, by a person by the name of Natalie Philippe. And... Uh, the Jupiter Mission Control Center is in constant contact with all the facilities uh, that are necessary for launching and uh, uh, following uh, uh, the Ariane 5 rocket. The displays at the Galliot uh, facility allow us to check the main parameters concerning propulsion, piloting, and trajectory. And they also provide the customers a first round of information, which is called an orbital diagnosis when uh, separation actually occurs. Uh, the complete post-analysis performed about a week after, uh, after the launch. So uh, we are closing in now. We are hit the 39-minute mark since uh, the Ariane 5 ECA roared off the pad. Uh, in the uh, sunset uh, of uh, the Amazon jungle. And the rocket science of the orbital ballet continues. The upper stage and Brisat are nearly in the correct attitude and configuration necessary for us to uh, send uh, Brisat uh, on its way. We are, uh, what, about three minutes uh, away from the separation of Brisat probably three of the longest minutes uh, the folks at Brisat have ever had. And every time I look at the numbers for area and space, it absolutely amazes me. Um, we have just seen Echostar 18 go on its way. It represented the 500... 33rd satellite to be launched by Arian Space. In a couple of minutes, uh, that number is going to grow to 534 when we successfully separate Brisat. And I often call the Arian 5, the uh, Arian 5 ECA, the heavyweight champion of the commercial launch industry. Well, she's earned that recognition and that uh, that title. Tonight, she's placing the 119th and 120th satellites into geostationary transfer orbit since uh, she arrived here at CSG in uh, 2002. You know what is, uh, what is really amazing uh, when you uh, see how this whole thing operates down here? Uh, as I said, my tenth time coming to uh, Koru. Ariane Space and its partners make it look so routine. If you think about the many, many parts of this magnificent machine, a lot of them were built in Europe. They're delivered thousands of miles by two specialized boats. The satellites are flown in by massive cargo jets into Cayenne, French Guiana. They're then uh, placed on very special trucks and they are delivered to the space base uh, about uh, 60 uh, kilometers away. And then a full month's worth of work. Has, it's absolutely amazing how time and time and time again 
because of attention to detail and professionalism, uh, the folks at uh, Arian Space and all of their partners uh, make it look uh, so very, very easy. And it's real rocket science. Anyway, high above the Indian Ocean, Brisat, the first dedicated satellite ever to be launched by a bank, is about to be delivered. Let's hear the announcement.